Welcome to CivilNet. My guest via Skype from Geneva is Sarkis Shahinian. He is the Secretary General of the Parliamentary Group Switzerland Armenia. Sarkis, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Maria. Thank you for having me. Uh, as most of us who follow or report on the news taking place around the world and in, uh, specifically about Armenian issues, uh, many of us were quite taken aback to hear about uh, intervention at the highest levels of the Swiss government regarding the placement of a genocide memorial called a Streetlight of Memory. Um, we did interview one of your colleagues last week about the history of the monument itself and, and where the sort of the controversy came from. Uh, I'm more interested uh, to talk to you today about this growing uh, Turkish, sometimes Turkish Azerbaijani lobby and, and the compliance by nations or those nations who somehow bend to the will of, of what Turkey demands from them. It's quite astonishing, especially a country like Switzerland who has recognized the Armenian genocide, criminalized uh, the Armenian genocide um, denial. Talk to me, what kind of pressure has come to bear that Didier Burkhalder, the foreign minister of, of, of Switzerland, would do this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of intervention? Above all, I have to remind that, uh, and this is something that all of us should remind, Turkey has more than 600 years of diplomacy, uh, opposite of uh, what it is our case of Armenians. Um, the issue is quite, it's quite simple. Uh, Turkey is using his uh, regional strategical power just in order to make other... Uh, um, powers out of the states uh, to, um, to to uh, to get uh, with their uh, pressure to be under their pressure and this is the case of Switzerland the economic balance between Switzerland and Turkey is of many billions of dollars uh, per year and uh, this is not the case of Armenia so this is of course the main interesting uh, issue that uh, can affect uh, the bilateral relations between Switzerland and, uh, and Turkey. And this is because of that, that many times, even and above all, uh, by the recognition of the Armenian genocide issue in 2003 and, go, and afterwards, uh, Turkey was every time trying to make pressure on Switzerland, but the right political assets that the um, the human rights issue in Switzerland has in the parliament uh, could refrain uh, Switzerland to get more compliant with Turkey. This is unfortunately not the case in this case in this uh, in this issue of the Geneva Monument, because um, Turkey moved uh, very uh, clever, very tough uh, towards the Federal Council, so the government of Switzerland and the Council of State, which is the government of Geneva. The problem is that uh, we have to counter now the logic of what Turkey is, uh, is bringing and uh, the evidence that uh, uh, both authorities uh, are trying to get uh, more, uh, more easy. They are trying to find the most easy way to uh, to come to terms with uh, with Turkey and unfortunately also for Azerbaijan because Azerbaijan is mm -hmm. putting a lot of pressure on Switzerland as well as to other states on the issue of uh, the um, the 100th century. Right. Uh, you know, Sarkis, you were born in the diaspora. You, you are an active Armenian of the diasporan community in Switzerland. Um, you know, so much has changed the, in the last several decades where 20, 30 years ago uh, a genocide commemoration would take place peacefully in front of foreign governments or foreign capitals. Today we are seeing Azerbaijani, Turkish counter protests taking place. We are seeing the growing sort of economic power of Azerbaijan due to its oil industry. We're seeing it, you know, in Brussels, in Washington and in all the power centers. Uh, you mentioned 600 years of Ottoman-Turkish diplomacy. 
added to that is Turkey again as an economic powerhouse compared to Armenia. How can Armenia, the state of Armenia and the diaspora counterbalance or counteract or combat these kinds of uh, this kind of wealth, this kind of power, this kind of privilege that we simply don't have? We have. We have. We don't have economic power, but uh, we can be thoughtful. So quality is uh, much more priority of uh, an issue of much more priority than quantity. And are we are we being as thoughtful as we can be? We have not, but we should. So uh, I think that on the eve of the of the centenary, we should uh, change a little bit our strategy, uh, not trying to oppose um, um, a symmetrical way of uh, of fight of uh, of struggle, but a rather asymmetrical, but a very thoughtful, a very fine, subtle uh, way of uh, putting our adversaries in. Uh, um, on the edge, and this would not be the first time that uh, this has happened, and uh, and I'm sure that uh, we will succeed. No, certainly, I think that uh, history has shown that even with uh, you know very small numbers and, uh, and and not as many resources, we have been able to lobby strongly to put our voices forward. But now, ahead of the hundredth anniversary. Uh, we're seeing, you know, greater pressure from from Turkey and from those states, as we said, who are complying. So, what is the way forward? What do your What does your community plan on doing to ensure that uh, Streetlight of Memory, that genocide memorial, will actually find a home uh, in Geneva? Because it originally was planned for Ariana Park, which is near the United Nations. Uh, what is the way forward now? So, I cannot get too much in detail, but uh, I can uh, assure you that our community is not alone. Uh, for instance, uh, and this is what counts, the most important issue is that uh, important authorities and uh, bodies like the Foreign uh, Affairs um, uh, Committee of the National Council uh, is going in the middle of January to question the Foreign Minister uh, as uh, how uh, he could dare to write, to even write such a letter to the State Council of Geneva. And parallelly, I think that the, um, uh, the media will, will be arised and will, um, will take the floor just in order to make people to understand where is the gap between what it's told from the uh, Federal Council in human uh, rights defense issue and between their real and uh, effective behavior. So there are contradictions that have to be arised, and we will, uh, of course, uh, try to implement this uh, in the right way, just in order to make uh, reversible uh, what uh, has already started and not last. Um, should we go uh, legally against what... Um, the, the state council is planning to do. I'm meaning uh, it's very probably to expect a negative answer. Uh, Sarkis, I'm curious, in cases like this, do you reach out to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Armenia for any kind of assistance? Do the diplomatic missions in Europe uh, try to assist the communities in these kinds of endeavors? You are opening a completely new chapter that I don't want to get uh, very deep in. Uh, of course, we are in contact with the Armenian Foreign Ministry, but about the quality of reaction and the, the way of, uh, of support, um, there are many, um, um, many differences that has uh, to be um, explained. And uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't want to do not, that now. Uh, because there are many other uh, issues where this is also happening. Uh, in many times it's, uh, this is working and other times it is not working. Now, the, the much important thing is that Switzerland has to understand that Swiss people are upset uh, 
because of their behavior. And this is what we have to do now. So I, I was going to ask you, what has the response been in Swiss media um, about uh, this latest controversy? Uh, it was very modest, I have to say you. Uh, a part of uh, the very good um, TV um, issue that uh, uh, has been done uh, two, uh, two weeks ago, uh, there was no echo uh, on this issue. Now I'm, uh, I'm aware that there are many media that are uh, much more interested in the issue, not last because on the 28th of uh, January, there will be the court case in Strasbourg on the Perinchek case, and people are trying to rely both issues. And uh, sincerely told, uh, this is not wrong, because both issues are relied. Both issues are a problem for Turkey, because both issues are coming from Switzerland. And Turkey is, of course, making pressure on Switzerland just in order to downplay uh, its role on the Armenian question above all in these both issues. Because uh, the main attack, the image attack that Turkey is presently becoming is coming especially from Switzerland. So if Switzerland will really take part to the G20 summit which will take place on June 2015, they have to demonstrate to Turkey I'm very sad to tell uh, you this, but this is exactly in these terms that it will go, uh, that Switzerland is quite compliant with Turkey in the issue of denying the Armenian genocide. Simply as that. Okay. Uh, it's part uh, of the narrative, it seems, over and over again. But uh, Sarkisyanyan, thank you. Uh, for sharing your thoughts, for enlightening us about uh, the case itself. We will be following it very closely and we'll be in touch with you again soon to talk about any progress uh, that you and the community have made. So thank you very much. Thank you to you. Goodbye. And I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest via Skype from Bern, Switzerland was Sarki Shainian. He is a Secretary General of the Parliamentary Group Switzerland-Armenia. Stay with CivilNet.